Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff die has friends. No, really, Jeff has friends. Jeff's friends are on this podcast. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies. Friendship. Ooh, baby, I love that jingle. Man, Joe McKenzie, thank you for that. Jeff Dies Friendship uh, podcast episode. Um, I'm not sure what number we're on. All I know is that it's the number one rated podcast in the world. Uh, it's got the most followers, the highest rating, and, uh, and we're very grateful to have all these records. We've just been crushing it. Uh, this week we're joined by uh, my buddy Jeff Z is in the house. And uh, he was from episode one, Jeff Zenisek, he's the best. And then also Chris Cope, fresh off the Conan O'Brien. Uh, he did stand-up on there, and he did it really good. It was his first TV appearance. Um, such a funny guy. And also we dabbled into his back life of, of jobs he had and stuff. It was a good, very fun episode. Um, guys, thank you for all the uh, subscriptions uh, to Patreon. If you're watching this. Hello, we love you. If you'd like to watch this, go to uh, patreon.com backslash Jeff Die. Subscribe on there. Uh, also, uh, a lot of these episodes are available on YouTube now. Uh, so if you go to youtube.com backslash Jeff Die, you can see some of the older episodes. Uh, but you got to wait. Those are all just the 10 week out ones. Um, but if you want to watch these now, go to iTunes, subscribe, or Patreon so you can watch. Uh, we love you guys. Enjoy the episode. We back, baby. We in it. We're here. This is a uh, this is a fun one. Tony, welcome back to the podcast. Yeah, baby. man, it's a special one. This is a midnight hour. That's why I think it's going to be more fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. We'll be a little loopy. Yeah, recording maybe really a little tonight. impatient. I don't know. You're I'm loopy. Soon. I'm very loopy. But here's the I've been a roller coaster of emotions all day. I think I'm going through my period or something. My first period, <laughs> maybe. I don't know what's happening, but I feel not. I feel happy now. That's great. Saw some baseball, and all my friends are in my house at almost midnight. This is a great feeling. Yeah, I'm up till 6 a.m. every day anyway, so it's nothing new. That's the thing. Up till? I've made your life a little harder so I can have a little (laughs) bit of happiness. You're a terrorist? (laughs) Up till 6 a.m.? No, I'm a producer. Yeah, not everyone with a beard is a terrorist, Do you pretend to be one of those Russians on the internet that I talked to late at night? I'm going to a sweaty election. One of those is me, Marsh. (laughs) Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, we're about to know. Oh, Jeff doesn't have a mic. I just realized that. No, yeah, we're kind of sharing. You know, talk, That's why Jeff I'm kind of leaning in. Don't well, worry about that. He's already been on the show. Yeah. Next up, Aaron Marsh. How you doing, babe? I'm doing good, man. I haven't seen you in a while. I know. We've, I've been gone on the Rizzo. I know. And now you're back. Now I'm back. Mm-hmm. Only for a couple days. How's work been? It's always paperwork, man. It's just paperwork <laughs> again. You know, like it's not like the paperwork doesn't change. The numbers change on the paperwork. That's it. That's true. I'm going to introduce these guys, and then I want to talk about your work. I've got a, fun, I have a really funny thing that I thought was great. Okay. Um, I, uh, which I think I've made funnier in my brain than what actually might have happened. I'll laugh at but it. But we'll yeah. talk about it. Yeah. I want to talk about my boss a little bit more. Oh, the suck my ass boss. Yeah. She complained about her neighbors that call the police on her all the time. Yeah. I found out a little about them. She's wrong. She's a dick. Oh, it, oh well, right. we also, But we also could uh, talk about the origin of suck my ass. We did. We did. We didn't bring it up. We did. On yeah, we did. Oh, we did. Dude. The people know, but okay. I, I just want to say. But you know what? She's still she's still number one in my book. She's still the suck my ass lady. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Also joining us uh, as as a drop in, Jeff Z is here from episode one. I think. Wow. Right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, episode what one. up, dudes? <laughs> he was on camera the first time, so say what's up to Patreon. They've yeah, never bro. seen you. What's up, dudes? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Jeff oh, some Z of them is, are ladies. Yeah, Jeff Z, single Jeff Z, dude. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Me and Jeff Z were in Vegas just last night, and then uh, he did. He opened for me at a corporate event. It was very fun. And then uh, I was in Arizona with. Was it a hustler corporate event? No, it was this. I don't want to say anything bad about it. It then, was great. Then it was a very great uh, corporate event. We love Diamond Resorts Casino. Thank you. Much love. I'm coming back a lot more times. It was awesome. Uh, but now it's time for our uh, featured guest. 
He is a very funny comedian, a very sweet guy. Uh, I will say a big old ball of energy, which is one of my favorite things about you. <laughs> it's 11.30 big... on a Monday, and I'm over like just snoozing. <laughs> no. Yeah, man, I'm real energetic. Now. I'm I like that that was English. You think you just spoke English right now. Did I not make any sense? I heard every word of it. Did you? Yeah. It sounded like a rubber band just twanging the mix. He has his headphones on. That's why he wears. That's why he wears that hat. That's right. Well, I need to get one of those hats so I can understand what. Well, I understood what he was saying. I like the you've. uh, I've only had all my interactions are at like the comedy magic club in the green room, and then I've seen you at Flappers a bunch of times, and I've watched your comedy. Uh, But also, like you just you have a big laugh. You have a big personality. You always say very funny things. One time, uh, you might be the only person I can think of that's ever quoted something that made me laugh. Usually when people quote like movies or shows, I'm always like, oh, God. Like, it annoys me. For you some love reason. it when I do it. Well, but when you, 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 like, I remember you did one in a in the green room. You're like, I've been bamboozled. I've been, and I don't even know what it was. But it's it, Malcolm X. It was amazing. It made me laugh so hard. <laughs> The yeah. weird thing that happens is like you quoted you quoted Malcolm X, yeah. But it was still funny. Hilarious. That's how funny of a guy you are. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jeff Tide Friendship Podcast. Chris Cope! Hello. Yes. Hi. Hello. People in the video. Patreon sounds like what Blackwater turned into. What is Blackwater? Uh it's former merc- uh former US military turned mercenaries, basically. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, we're we're streaming for them. Donate <laughs> <laughs> right. <Going> today. <laughs> If you get the gold package, we send you an AR-15 fully loaded with a bump stock. That's oh. true. So just subscribe. The highest level of the Patreon, you get a gun. <laughs> oh, can a we melt it down? Feature. A just new about feature. that easy. It's a 3D the printed gun. In the gun. It's paper mache, though. I love the fires. <laughs> well, uh-huh. it, we should do that. Just send really inappropriate gifts to all the Patreons. Like, here you go. And it's you, like, saw that, you saw that dick sleeve you found in yeah. Iowa. Just a send it. Just send Is it that to a comment? Okay, I just want to make sure you no, guys are No, it was something slime. way weirder. Way weirder. What's a dick sleeve? <laughs> it's a sleeve you, have a you small put over your dick to make your dick bigger, dude. It's like a, like it's a small wiener, thing. dude. Yeah. He, he found one in a hotel room in Iowa. Like a black wiggler, like, dude. It like expands your shaft. No, it just no, makes it, it like, over it. since you're, if you're the wiener's real small, you put it over this, yeah, and then it has, like, ribbed in there, so it kind of feels good for you, too. Imagine putting but your it hand. it fills out her, you know, if you're yeah. going to get yeah. down. Yeah. Putting so, your hand in a boxing glove, except it's a wiener and a wiener. I guess it could be a condom, though, at the same time. Well, we come up with kind of, 40 more examples. So it's like a Russian <laughs> doll, but yeah. the penis. Oh, the penis. I know exactly what, I used to work at a porn shop, I know exactly what yeah. those are. I found they one do kind of have a bit of a condom inside, a latex yeah. inside, and yeah, it gives you an extra inch to it, you know. It's a lot. It's lifts. It's lifts for your dick. That's what yeah. it is. Dick lifts. Dick lifts. That's what it is. You used to work at a sex store? Yeah, in my early 20s. I, you have no idea the things I've seen. Oh, man. We had, Did you like working sex? there? Did I like working there? Yes, because I got to smoke weed on the job. One of my best friends was, we're like co-managers. I got to take off early doing for stand-up, and I started working the roads. So like the things that I didn't like, having to clean up a fucking. Uh, oh god! Yeah, the finish oh, that. No. No. Finish that sentence. Oh, no. the dick sleep for eight hours. Here's <laughs> 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 well, the thing: I don't like. So I've been in a sex shop, you know, a few times in my life, and when I go Jeez. in there, I'm always kind of giggly and like innocent. And there's been times I bought things from there, but I'm still like, I can't believe I'm in here. You know, I don't like how confident and cool and collected everyone that works there is with everything that's going on well when it's your job for eight hours a day like i could legit watch two people fucking and make a comment about the couch <laughs> like you see that? that's a good rattan sofa right there that guy's right. a good thing it's just when you become desensitized to anything sure. and also like i said we had a theater and booths oh, go over to our shelf so of like, wieners the, the, the place that you've gone into was not the place that i worked okay. i love when people came in and were giggly and fun instead of the normal degenerate behavior that took place and that sure. we were uh, in the middle of nowhere. And the reason why the owners picked that spot specifically was uh, according to a gay hookup site, about two miles down the road was a hookup <laughs> boat ramp that kept getting in trouble with the law, right? Boat ramp. A boat ramp where it's like, we're going to meet up here and fuck in our trucks or whatever. These oh, like the Minnesota are. Vikings. How, how did the owner of the sex store get the hot... Where people hot, going the, to the hot tip? It's on the internet, man. That's what the internet is. Google Everyone yeah, talks about it. Yeah, how did that guy know? He's like, look, I know where to find. Because he's doing the stores. I think he just kind of like troll. He would troll them to find yeah, if you're locations. Opening up a sex store in the middle of nowhere, you were probably kind of a creep first. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's true. Like, I mean, they're millionaires. That's true. And that says because yeah. they open like a dozen of these, and they can we open up they, next they, to my favorite. They push? would find an area, <laughs> and basically they go, well, if we open up here, we can move this indoors. <laughs> There won't, we were never raided. I worked there for three years, and all the things that we did were fucking shady as fuck. <laughs> I mean, legit, I can say this now. I, I gave money to ATF, ATF agents. 
What's ATF agents? Alcohol, tobacco, and firearm. Yeah. They came in one time you for guys a, fucked those things a too? surprise inspection. They brought a dog to the fucking place. <laughs> and I literally gave them an envelope full of, I'm guessing, money was what it felt like. Really? And they got to keep anything they wanted. This one dude got a fucking Jenna Jameson, like $400 sex doll. Oh, and my like, I even God. called the owner. He's like, whatever <laughs> they want. <laughs> That yeah. was incredible, bro. The thing. What did they bring? Like a jizz sniffing dog? Like what did the <laughs> Basically dog do? Basically, what I, the way my boss explained it to me was like, That's good. the gifts and <laughs> the envelope over. were to get a fair shake. Okay, they could come in there, find something, and then you could be shut down. Right. But if you go, here's these things. Cool. We didn't find anything, and they just move on. Amazing. It's, what were they looking for? The Genesis. What do you have? Alcohol, tobacco, tobacco, and firearms. They thought okay. maybe we were whole because these places are so shady. Oh, it's a front. Yeah, well, yeah, they must have been having. They must have been well, selling drugs. Like, like, the like, Space Odyssey in Tampa. Alcohol. And- uh, the strip, the famous strip club, Space Odyssey in Tampa, uh, was owned by the same guys. It was just this big gas uh, ownership group. I mean, and some of them were on fucking drugs. I get a phone call going, take all you have, all petty cash you have, all cash you have on you, except for what you need to run your shift. Put it in the bank. Jimmy's on coke. He's gonna come by and try to make a, a mega deposit. Yeah, we never specified oh. it was Florida, but I think it's pretty clear that it's yeah, Florida. It was yeah, Seven in Florida. And it was just it was a job that paid really well for what I for, and it gave me freedom and it gave me you know opportunity to be a working stand up comic. Right. So hey, I took that's advantage why of you it. think like you're you're around comics all the time and you're like these people are nothing. You have no when you see a guy bring his wife into a theater to get gang banged, you have no idea. Oh my goodness. Like, goodness. When I had to walk in there and say, "Can you what guys movie keep?" Was showing? It? I don't know. Okay, just check. <laughs> this is more shocking than when we had a porn star on there. Yeah. On our podcast. Well, but like he's saying, he's on the right side of history. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, he's dealing with sincerity. I'm just saying, she's doing it to show off. Yeah, yeah she's doing it. I'm, I'm just I'm telling you what the fuck I I'm saw just, at the age of 22. Yeah. <laughs> That's you know? insane. That's crazy. I would see dudes come in and like we had two sides of the, uh, the we had booths and we had theater. And in, in the, the booths, there was two sides to the booth. The straight side. And the gay or the gay side, because the we Wilkes had, Booth side, yeah. <laughs> he was an actor. He was a strong actor. Um, no, uh, there was glory holes. I mean, oh gosh, this place sounds crazy. I was talking about a store where they just sell like, uh, yeah, like the front, ribbons you can yeah, tie your you wife in. up or something. No, we had a lot of stuff too. We had a retail front, yeah. and that's what we kind of that's what we always focused on. Like, well, let's make this successful because. Basically, the retail there was to float the business. Like, if the retail made profit, great. If not, so it covered the it was bills. A, it, was uh, a so mullet, it, was, it was a mullet it sex was a, shop. It was a funnel. Business in the front, party in the back, baby. Pretty much. So I mean, had these, our nice. theater would make four or five grand a week cash. Those booths, would, those booths would make like 15 grand a week yeah. cash. Do you know my wow. aunt Susie? Cash in a fucking... <laughs> like, Untraceable. I mean, I don't know I guess, what so the fuck I, I know that oh you were, you're a positive guy, and you were like, oh, you know what, help me like... Do whatever, and I it I, damaged I, I me could, a little bit. You're like I could smoke weed while Only I was there. A little, yeah. We, but well, here, the here's my you question: just get used to it. Well, how did you get that job? Or like, how did you oh, even my friend, apply? My for friend, that my job? friend worked there, and did, she was like, he never. His morality is real negotiable. <laughs> So she's like, give it a part time job. She anti vouched for you. My first, the first manager we, uh, my firm was like the assistant manager, uh, and the manager who hired me was a fucking straight crackhead. Right. Just, oh, like no, that I mean, the like, must have been Janelle. Awesome. Her name was Janelle. She was a straight crackhead. She never came Last in. Last name, please. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't even know. If you, first interview Janelle, question: You got a cigarette, crackhead. and you're like, uh, yeah, I've got a no, cigarette. This bitch Can got I have her, it? The yes, best. You the, got the job. She fired me when I, we were trying to get her fired because she was just basically a crackhead. She'd never show up. Yeah. She'd just bring you change. For the, she just would do the bare minimum of her job. <laughs> so we finally got her fired. I got fired. In that process, I come back a week or two later. I got to give her her, her last check. Oh. Wait, well, yeah, as somebody, you got fired too? And you got. And to then keep- I basically, then like, like I got fired. Then a week later, she got fired. And then I got rehired. Oh, rehired. Son of the yeah. Basically, the, the, the owner was like, listen, you're not fired. Let me sort this out. I'll get, you got a week. I'll get, give me a week. This place. He paid me for the week off too. Um, The funny thing is, so about like a month after she got shit canned. I want to work at this place. <laughs> a month after she got shit canned, her trailer got repossessed. And if you've never that seen that, yeah, if you've never seen a crackhead's trailer get repossessed. <laughs> no, because like my, my you think she's I, unruly normally. My friend and I drove to her property and just saw where they drug that motherfucker out of the oh, ground, yeah. like because they pull it and then it's these, these long ass like just divots <laughs> in the ground. You know, yeah. it looks drug. And I remember we just stood on our property, like property, smoking weed and laughing, like you stupid <laughs> bitch. 
you got everything you got coming to you. Uh, you know? That is, I, I, I like to think Florida. of her yelling <laughs> at the tow truck driver about all of the possessions she has. My but, shit! Yeah, but, there, but nothing's good. Mm. All my McDonald's toys are in there. Yeah. All my, like, I gotta be honest, I smell a sitcom. Oh my God. Uh, That's not story. what I smell, but I'm sitting over here. <laughs> Something I would love to animate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it'd be so Dude, amazing. you guys. And the, uh, like on the, the the worst part was having to go in and just the theater was the worst part because we had it was ten couches and like a sixty inch flat screen TV that oh. was the theater and like you'd go in there and just so it uh, sounds like Jeff's living room <laughs> sounds like WrestleMania is what it's right dude. yeah except so everybody's the, the, fucking so there's like a th- sounds like okay, living so it's couches like theater ass dudes jerking and then there off was, if you wanted to be by yourself you go into a booth, booth yeah wild. This episode is going to be really good. You guys are going to have to end I'm very us. excited about Are you Instagram storing in the middle of the podcast? Just to let everyone know, this is going to be a, a, a great one. <laughs> a, a doozy. You guys should be subscribing and <laughs> so signing you up. Are you plugging the episode code. that you're currently on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's classic. I, oh, my God. I used to do whippets at my job because I would just because I was of the one. Of course you box, did. We could sell them. We sold I went every, whippets at Starbucks. You sold whippets? We sold whippets because you could legally sell them in Florida. That's a common yeah. sex shop thing. We also used to sell rush like video head cleaner which is called poppers which uh, a lot of uh, it's big in the homosexual community where they sniff it I think community the homosexual community oh I thought you said I thought you said something they sniff they (laughs) sniff it and then it really it uh, causes your sphincter to relax well, Which would make not me, bro. That's why yeah, whippets big. do that. Dude. No whippets no, make poppers. your brain go numb. <laughs> poppers, poppers. I used to. That. Oh my god, yeah. double up with the uh, the whippets. The two two canisters and one one under two two cartridges and one canister. Hit that thing. Jeez. And customer be asking me questions like, "Can I get change?" And I'm just hearing, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Charlie Brown." I'm just t-shirt. guessing what they want. <laughs> yeah. Like can, of, can I do anything for you? There's a can of Ready Whip, just like open. He's like, "No, you never used a whip cracker." Cream. Like, there's actually you bought like a whipped cream a dispenser. Uh, yeah, they call it a cracker, but it's a whipped cream dispenser. Why does it always have to be racial with these places? Uh, I think it's because it, the sound it makes it makes a cracking sound. Oh, that's way better. When you put the so uh, the cartridge racial. in, you and you can literally it says the N word. No, come on. Jeff, what if it did? And it was such a weird job, man. The the things, you know, it was just weird. Do you think that building's still standing, or has it caught fire? Has no, nope, I drive by every time I go home. I drive by and stop in. Really? Yeah, you know, I'll say hello because I saw the manager. I think still works, or that I know. Did you ever get to think like so when you first took the job? You must have thought this is outrageous. You know, you're still kind of innocent. Did you ever think like, man, I'm probably gonna get to like have tons of sex at work or like get involved in that kind of stuff? Um, no, because when you saw what came in, you're yeah. like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> like, there was some shit. Like, the fun thing was, I would see uh, it was in, okay. What made the the job so interesting was it destroyed <laughs> what thoughts I had of what normal was. A dude would come in in a John Deere outfit. Do you know what I mean? Like, he yeah. just got done working at the plant. All right. Take his wedding ring off, saunter himself onto the gay side of the booths. Another cl- uh, a customer that I know for a fact. Would go in on the other side. That was the glory holes. Yeah. They'd be in there for 25 minutes, both of them, you know, and then I'd see the dude mouthwashing in the parking lot on the camera. It's crazy. I mean, code enforcement came in one time and uh, we'd always pull. But he might have been married to a man. You know, maybe he was like, no, I, just I don't think cheat he, on I don't think he was Randy. This, Not if you saw what he looked like. And when was this? In Florida, too. Is that Was that a thing? I mean, eh, I mean, you can still, but it was just, I mean, people just grow up a certain way and they just know they can't be a certain way. Right. But the fun thing was, uh, we had this big ass wooden, oh, they are that way, wooden piece of, uh, <laughs> wooden, like this piece of wood that we keep by the, keep by the desk with a, a always charged nail gun. So if code enforcement came, because those glory holes were straight illegal. Right. So you'd see just code. Drywalling? Because we had to we had to let you had to uh, we had to unlock the door for you to come in. Right. So we would see the guy, and then there was always two people on shift, and then one person would go to the door, and the other one would run back to the fucking booth with the wood and just go Amazing. And nail that fucker in there. <laughs> Officer, how could someone get their wiener in this? <laughs> There's no holes. You keep talking about these glory You're holes. You're still holding the no, nail. I'm not, I'm not kidding glory you. Hole with one arrows. guy that came in, he put his hand over the nail and he goes, this nail's hot. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, bro, it's, it's I don't Florida, know. It's Florida, baby. Good luck with that hole. He's like, this court. nail just got put in. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's amazing. It's, it's this, 90 degrees. It's this Florida. Code enforcement was the only thing that we had issues with. Other than that, we had no problems. We operated. I mean, they made 
buckets and buckets and buckets of money. Yeah, I, can I made buckets of money. I wonder if they were um, the reason they were. Tr- I was keep trying to figure out what they were trying to hide because it seems like all that stuff would be okay to do, except I guess prostitution, right? You, I mean, you can't, you can't just openly go into a place and fuck. Right. Like it's a business. Oh, you bet you can. Aaron uh, does. Yeah, no, I had to yell at a couple one time because they. I was like, I was, you know, because it would slow. It would be busy, but well, it would kind of quiet hose? down. Hey. So I would start reading or something, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'd look on the camera and like in the booths, and I'd see a, a four or five people standing around a booth with a door open. I go back on the flashlight, some husband fucking his wife, Unbelievable. and they're voyeurs. They're like, "Oh, you guys want to watch?" And I'm like, oh, "Like, I'm like, all right, break it up." <laughs> you know, like, I go, I'm twenty two. Like, well, I'm like, all right, guys, you gotta find a booth. I used to yell at my goes to fucking high school dance. Like, come on, you wallflowers. <laughs> I have accents. I got bored. I I also think like. You said like it destroyed what helped you think or what you thought was normal. So did people ever come in and they're like, hey, uh, I don't know how to like say this, but do you have, this might sound weird. Like butt do you plug have, right over there. Yeah. And then you're like, there's nothing you can tell me that's going to be you weird. Literally, when, you, when you see a dude, and it's so funny because they, uh, I love when someone gets like, a, we get like a normal, like they're like, oh, I'm getting this for a gag gift. And I'm like, sure. Yeah. Why'd you spend 25 minutes picking out dildo size? Right. <laughs> Like, if it's I'm a gag gift, on it, if it's a gag gift, you're going to grab one thing and be gone. Yeah. yeah. No, that dude had two dicks in his hand. One. Nobody's he playing was like he was measuring zucchini in the grocery store. Uh, Has uh, this affected yeah. your own sex life? Like, do you have it vanilla sex? It did when I worked there because I, I, would, I was, I was kind of less horny. I wanted to have more conversation. Oh, bro. No, no, it's, I'm You're fine. You're a stallion. I'm fine now. Okay. <laughs> I'm fine now, but like, I'd go a home and I'd just gift. be just so inundated. When you've been staring at a naked woman, like, because we had porno playing Always. in the store. So it was oh, yeah. just, wow. and like, sounds like my brother. We also room. had to keep, because we had, uh, <laughs> we had the booths, we had to also make sure all the channels worked. So there's one TV that just ran all of the channels in the booth. And we had, Every kind of porno you could think of. So wow. every fifth thing you'd see was a dude smashing a dude or <laughs> transsexual person smashing. I don't know what. I just uh, need a gag gift. Uh, I'll take that $4,500 sex doll over there. You're like, oh, for a gag? The most <laughs> expensive one we had was like seven fifty, dollars And it was... Pretty convincing. I, I, I was I wasn't gonna. You it know. got the job after Chris left. Did it, it took over like the counter? Woman. I got replaced by sex dolls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mexicans aren't taking our jobs. Sex dolls are Did taking. Did it look their... like a woman? Yeah, it was like uh, it was a better version of the Jenna Jameson. I can't remember the porn star I was modeled after, but I was like, hey, you're gonna get your money's worth. You know, <laughs> you're going to get your money's worth. I was like, just remember looking at like one day. I mean, like, I think we sold like three of them. That was the funny thing. Did they walk we out on their own? We sold shit. Like, people would come in and spend $1,000 on sex toys. Yeah, yes. that's so much. Like, like but they were always couples. And they would, and we, you know, and they would just be like, yeah, let me get this, 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 this. And then we talk them into lube. And then Sex talk freaks them. have tons of money, man. A lot of them don't have children. Uh, they figured out it's more fun to fuck, you know, and not raise a child. Because it's like, you can't have a slip and slide orgy with a three-year-old around. Right. You well, know? Oh, the fuck you can't in Florida, man. That's how you do. Stop. You put That's, your kid in the, you know, in the kennel you get or something. A, uh, the kennel? <laughs> what is this, an ice detention facility? Oh, you're yeah. going to have morals now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, that's um, the kind of things I imagine they're doing with kids, you know, if they're doing all this sex stuff. No, I don't. probably I, bad parents. No, I mean, just because you're open sexually doesn't mean you're a bad parent. That, you just talk about an orgy slip and slide. No, but I'm saying, but r- rarely do you find those people have children. Right. Yeah, dude, my Aunt Susie you, lost her kids not because she was crazy sex-wise. She was just a bad mom, you know? <laughs> Some people are just bad parents. It's not but, related. No, I mean, like, uh, there's a, like, there's a, a, a swinger community in Susie. Florida called Caliente. It's like a swinger place. Like, it's, <clears throat> yeah. these people have a specific way they want to handle themselves. And Absolutely. They're allowed to shit. If you, I say get as many nuts as you can. That's good advice. Listen, you know. Do you sell shirts that say get as many nuts, nuts as, as you, you can? can. <laughs> I probably could sell those. That'd be yeah. amazing. That should be on a coupon. I'm dude, I still you just sell condoms. I'm Have lazy like about getting new ones. On it. I think I'm gonna go to koozies. Yeah, koozies are the best. I've made thousands off of koozies. I just don't know what to put on a koozie. I do you have any jokes in your act that are drinking jokes? No, yeah. I don't really have any drinking. Like oh. it's all pot. You can't put pot on a koozie, can you? Uh, I don't see why not. Or like all the jokes you say in a regular sentence, dude. You can put any of that in a koozie. Yeah, any one liner that's from your act you could put in on a koozie. 
make tons of money because you can make them for so cheap. Grab them by the koozie. And they sell them by $5. <laughs> <laughs> Those would sell. Those would crush, dude. That would crush, actually. Yeah, yeah. you wouldn't. Yeah, what? When I'm at the loony bins. But you wouldn't even have to bomb, like you wouldn't even have to do well. You could bomb and sell like 400 of those after a show. Joke to set. I just walk up. Appreciate you guys coming out. I'm gonna go ahead and sell my merch. <laughs> he didn't do a bit, but that koozie's amazing. I'm That's getting great. that koozie. I watched a guy bomb in front of me in Boston, but he had some dumb shirt that said like, it said some words. Or said like one big word, like let's say I said what or something. But then when you folded it up in the right direction, it, it would say fuck off. Yeah. And uh, I opened for this guy. Oh, you did? What's his name? I watched him bomb fuck off, every guy. show. But then people would line up Ron for his Feingold? fuck off shirts. Was it Ron Feingold? No, I think a lot of people probably sell those shirts though. I would think so too. Yeah. yeah. I sold condoms. They were great. I thought about doing because I have a bit about lighters, selling lighters, but I think it's really hard to transport all that. You oh, sold yeah. condoms after shows? Mm-hmm. They, I, were they like... I had the place called sandwithacondom.com. So it was a regular latex condom and the packaging on the outside was like my comedy album, all my social media and stuff with a joke on the inside. Okay. Um, so your comedy wasn't raw or nothing? <laughs> I'm going to start just talking to you. <laughs> I'm just going to talk to you, Jeff. That reaction's my thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, because we do it for a living, you know? Yeah. It's like That's I'm dropping amazing. a Burger King bag off in front of Gordon Ramsay. He's like, fuck, are we doing this? <laughs> oh, it's a rodeo burger. Can we please have that be the clip from the episode? <laughs> we just um, on air. Chris, you just did um, Conan O'Brien, which was so freaking good. Thank you. I was so excited. I didn't see it live. I watched it the next morning on uh, on the internet. Does anybody watch anything live anymore? No, that's, yeah, no way. I got a question. Uh, You're on TV. How does that get tallied? Like, how many people view it? No, because, like, uh, if something, like, it's like it used to be something debuted or like a show would debut and then. The next day you go, it was a fucking hit. You could gauge that metric by that one night. Well, fuck, what if nobody wants to watch that night? Like, they'll watch yeah. it a week from now on Hulu. Because I, I don't watch anything live. I, 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 no I, one does in real I, time. But that's, that's, what, I mean, real time. that's what killed so, the rest of development, is that nobody was watching it live. And so they canceled it, but those DVD sales were through the roof, so they brought it back. Right, but nowadays they think about that. And it makes them guess more. And since they're buffoons, their guesses are all over the place. Yeah. Because because there is a way to sort of know if people watched it like a few weeks later, or if people are binge watching it. But they do those ratings like the next day. They put them out. And they can. It's like you can fucking sink a ship off those ratings. And they have yeah. those like Nielsen boxes where they like no, but which they also, is so stupid, <clears throat> right? And then they also have they can see if people DVR'd something. But even DVR is outdated. I know. Yeah, it's all. Awesome. I mean, we say that now. There's people in fucking Topeka that are like, "Fuck him, I like my DVR." Yeah, when I, I, <laughs> I got my DVR, DVR connected to my VHS. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Well, like, I, like if, if Netflix, or forget Netflix, if Hulu was to merge with like Major League Baseball or was to merge like the NFL or something, no one would have cable boxes. Like if sports was able to be yeah. streamed. Yeah. Like I think that's the only thing people watch in real time is I like don't sports. Know. I mean, because yeah. I mean, ESPN kind of did that. You can, what? there's the ESPN app and then you can just pay something a month to get but that app. I think app. the yeah, ESPN app. they don't have app. all the sports. Yeah. Right. True. You just then go to CBS. Like at a certain point, there's like, you can buy three channels or buy the app for them and pay but the yeah. app, like my ESPN app, runs through my cable provider. Yeah, you, have to, yeah, you usually have to put in a login. Yeah. Really? I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can't just yeah. watch the ESPN app. I thought some... you could just purchase it separately. Uh, no, no. I actually saw That's something today, fucking, too. The moment it becomes separate, yeah. that's when you can flush yeah, fucking co- uh, like Cox Cable and Affinity and all those. Yeah, I, I, so bad. I saw something today that was like, everyone, because everyone's talking about, like, oh, no one's watching the NFL anymore. When, like, last year, 77 out of the top 100 most watched things were NFL games. Mm as opposed to like 22 out of a hundred, 10 years ago, whatever. But that's also um, because of that. Like you can't watch mm-hmm. those games anywhere else and everything's, no one's watching anything on TV anymore. Right. Everyone's watching on Hulu yeah. or whatever. And it's also so really it's like, easy to throw a Reddit fucking stream to find football. Sure. 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 Oh, yeah, my my roommate right. does that all the time. Yeah. You know what I love is uh fucking Papa John's complaining. <laughs> and if 
Seinfeld's ruining my pizza. No, it's shit pizza. Everyone else is caught up. There's pizza <laughs> rev, pieology, and you're sitting there peddling that same dog shit. They're selling sandwiches now. Do you see that? I love your passion, and also your two best analogies have been food related. Yeah, it's like chopping off a Burger King at Gordon Ramsay's house, and it's like that's a fucking phenomenal. Example I would have never thought of, but Chris Cope is always on brand. <laughs> now the it's like Papa walking to the Waffle House with your shoes on. It yeah. don't make any sense. <laughs> you, yeah, but you said Papa John's like, like I everyone, just get everyone knows his like, dog like, shit like it was ISIS or something. No, because in comparison, like Papa John's has been coasting on that garlic sauce. <laughs> For fucking years. <laughs> like, that's what they're, like, when that came out, we all shit our pants and go, oh, it's pizza with the garlic sauce and a pepperoni, and we're all happy. I like, we all shit our pants. You shit your pants. Yeah. You eat enough of it. And then I just get mad when the fucking racist ass stupid owner's like, oh, because black people are kneeling on the NFL. Nobody's yeah. watching the NFL and nobody's buying their pizza. It's like, no, the game just caught up with you, homie. Yeah, absolutely. Domino's, did you, did you see the Papa John's is now selling Domino's like sandwiches? Wow. Uh, what do you mean? There's, you know, like Domino's sells the those hot sand- baked sandwiches. Yeah, hot yeah. baked sandwiches. Yeah, they're selling them now. Yeah. They're, they're they're basically at that McDonald's breakfast point. Like, we'll give you anything you want. Just buy our <laughs> shit, <laughs> please. Don't meal. Hey, we can meal. We can do chicken wings. Yeah, you want chicken wings? Chicken tenders. What do you need? <laughs> He's. I mean, like you know, I just don't. Yeah, they get on my nerves. I I hate when I always blaming black people for everything, man. I, going back to the uh, what were we talking about? The, well, we were no, so we were talking about watching things in real time and like yeah. football and Hulu and that was all to merge. But I was uh, at Montreal recently and I felt so bad for this girl. She was like, "Hey guys, like to all the comedians because we were all like breaking bread and getting shows. Is everyone like gonna remember Friday at eleven o'clock? My Comedy Central special comes out, and I remember thinking like this. Even this question feels weird." I'm definitely not. Even if First I'm off, home. First off, Friday at 11? Yeah, even if I'm home on Friday at 11 p.m. You're either, you're either I'm not out or watching. asleep. Yeah. At Friday at 11. Yeah, Friday at 11, if I, unless I was sick I saw, or a child. Uh, and Julian I still wouldn't watch it. Had I still wouldn't was think, closed. like, oh, let's Joy wait McCullum for it to come had his see. release at midnight. And I'm like, right. did he not have any say on that time? No, you don't. So when My Comedy Central Presents came out, it was 11.30 at night on a Friday. You might as well flush that motherfucker. Uh, it was, nobody cared. Nobody watched I mean, you can't get, you have a copy of it? Uh, I do, yeah. Okay, so you have that. Right, but so like, basically I just, just get in trouble if I use it on anything. But you can use it, I mean, you don't need it for real anymore to get work. You get work mm-hmm. by itself. But yeah. at a certain point, it did maybe benefit you But for that. But other than that... There was like three it's people. Just a, it's, it's a notch. It's just like, I did it. Exactly. And there was like probably 20 of us that got Comedy Central Presenters Presents just that year. And only three of those people out of the 20 that had it, people talked about their presents. It was Who like, were those three? Uh, it was like Nate Bergazzi... Um, Donald Glover, but he wasn't yeah. getting talked about it because his was great. He was getting talked about because he was doing so much other stuff. Yeah, and they were like, "Oh, look at the stand up," and it was fine. It was just it was it wouldn't like move the meter if he wasn't on Parks and Rec and doing all this other great stuff. Community. And yeah. then there was one other person. Um, but besides those three, all super forgettable, including mine. Like they were just very much like you go out and do thirty minutes. It was all fine. That's it. Yeah, and then it was that was a wrap. It was but but I want to talk about your Conan. Were you nervous? Up until the door opened. And then you crushed it. Yeah, because I. it was one of those things where you don't, you know what it is, until, but you don't know what it is until you see it. Like, sure. The door opened, I go, it's 150 people all wanting to laugh. Right. That was my, and I just, and the fun thing was, uh, there was, it's about a 15, 20 foot walk from when the door opens to your mark. That's a weird thing, yeah. No, but I kind of liked it because I bull, I bull kind of rushed at it because I was like, and it gave me the confidence That's that good. I needed to kind of like, like you're running into battle in a way, in a way, you know, not that I'm comparing what I did to that. <clears throat> God bless the troops. Um, <laughs> I just hate when I use war analogies because like I couldn't ever imagine myself in that situation. So you were um, like a chef rushing ah! to the. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're your chopped special ingredients. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I was on a weed cooking show on Netflix. It's still on. Oh really? Yeah, called Cooking on High. And Where uh, they try to compete with Vice. They're like they have seventy five <laughs> weed shows. <laughs> well, no, we should. This thing got shot eighteen months ago. I thought it was in the fucking trash can. Wow. Because you know you shoot things and it just doesn't. Yeah, end it's up on there now though. 
It's on Netflix now, yeah. Wait, it's we great, should, yeah. I'd watch that. It sounds fun. Yeah, they're only 15 minute episodes. It's funny because half of them start with, for the next half hour. Yeah. It's like you can just tell this was edited in a rush. <laughs> like, hey, Netflix wants this because Netflix probably bought it for less than 200 grand. Right. You know, because they don't have to pay royalties under that amount. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, my, my friend texted me. Uh, I found out through a person doing posts. Before the producer of the show found out. That's amazing. Because she, yeah, my friend texts me and goes, I did your subtitles today. I was like, for what? She goes, for the show called Cooking on High. And then I texted my buddy who, uh, the producer, and uh, he goes, as far as I know, it hasn't been bought or sold or anything. And I was like, dig it, look into it, because my friend at Netflix just, you know. Yeah. But, but that's great news. Yeah. So as and far you as got coming, paid no matter what. Yeah, I mean, I got paid when I first did it. It was sad new media. Co- but it's good to have it out there. <laughs> yeah, but it's good to have it out there. No, it's, it's awesome. great. It, it, uh, J- uh, my remember JC calls everything coming up cope. <laughs> because like when bad things will happen, the universe immediately corrects it. Like I had, uh, I, spent, love that. I had spent six months dealing with uh, Hannah over at Kimmel. Okay. And she approved my set. And then a week later she was fired. Ah. Uh. And they took a permanent hiatus from stand up. I broke a fan in my room out of rage. I took a week off. Right. You know, because yeah, it sucks. Because that was that was legitimately a moment where I had to really dig within myself to stand back up. You know what I mean? And, yeah, yeah. And to keep going. And then because it is a tedious process getting those just sets getting told like, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. Yes. And then psych. Yeah, yeah. And I just you know I took it to heart. I, I like I, like anybody would. And then I emailed uh, JP at Conan on Monday at two o'clock and at three thirty I booked it. Oh, that's amazing. Because I think it just it was a perfect storm of, you know, he probably had a fallout because it was two days later. I got I had two that's days. That's great. To, I didn't get they didn't get to get in my head. It was just we got two days till I got to do this. Right. But I'd already been working on that set so many goddamn times. Sure. I it was, was a like, phenomenal I, set. I thought it was very you. good, very fun. Well, the good thing is, uh, they I hope that they I think they want me back. Of course. And I good thing is that sets off my old album so anything I can do new is going to be newer and more I think what I like I just it was nice uh, when Conan walked up he was real complimentary and I just wanted to keep screaming monorail <laughs> you know yeah and he's like well you can do that next time and I almost fainted when he said that I was like next time <laughs> yeah. okay you said next time this yeah. is legal, yeah. this yeah. legally binding I got you on tape you ginger headed yeah. motherfucker yeah. <laughs> What's, who were the other guests that were on your episode because I just uh, watched you stand up and Howie Mandel Okay. So you got yeah. another comic with you. That's so Yeah, Lil Rel was, dude, he was absolutely complimentary. What surprised me the most was how big and tall Andy Richter was. Oh, really? Yeah. He's over six foot tall. Didn't know that. Could have been a line. I mean, like, I was like, God damn, bro. Like, you're. We once saw him at a lunch, but like mm-hmm. he was just sitting by us. And he probably looks small because he's always next to Conan, who's right. six, he's nine. Yeah, yeah, Conan's true. six, four. Yeah. But he, his midsection is like 42 inches. So it's just he's very lanky because it yeah. looks like he had to like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. dislodge a rib to get down in the, <laughs> in the frame. I don't want this to sound disrespectful or like rude, but what is Andy Richter's end plan? Like I thought, like he was the Shit. sidekick that was like eventually that, gonna be the guy, and that, like yeah, or, remember he tried he to be the TV guy. Show. He had a TV yeah. show. Yeah. It was like I think it was called Andy Richter controls the universe or something. Yeah. Like that. But yeah. was it a scripted yeah, I think show? He's had yeah. 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 Sitcom no, I think show, he's had right? several shows. Interesting. Yeah. They've tried. They've tried one. to. They've tried to make him work, but it's like you know what? He's probably what close to fifty, right? He's probably very. I mean, he's fucking yeah, financially. It was almost set. like ten years where he tried to really start his own thing and it just didn't fly. And, and he's then like, when right, TBS I'm happened, this. I'm this. I guest star in movies. Yeah. I work. I maybe shoot two movies, three movies a year. I get to. Yeah. I get to scratch that itch, and I have a steady gig in Burbank. I guess I just know 5,000 people in Los Angeles, and none of them are content. So I just naturally think, <laughs> he's Everyone, not content. No, I mean, you know, you get to a certain point, I guess you're happy. You're going, I've done more than 99.9% of the people right. in this business. But you you have to be like a combination of both to be successful. Yeah. Like you say, like, no, I'm happy. I'm not, like, pulling my hair out because I don't have more. But I'm not done getting more. No, and I mean, he's not quitting the show. He's right. still acting. So, I mean, like, there are probably new horizons for him. You just got to keep finding them, you know? Who was the other guy? So you said Lil Rel. Lil Rel. He was great. He was really funny on the but show. Who was the other guy? Howie Mandel. Oh, Howie Mandel. It was all comics. Yeah, it was great. Howie, uh, I think he left before my set because he was the first guest. But, uh, yeah, man, it was just, it was the fun, the fun thing was. He saw you. He was like, this guy's going to shake my hand. Well, uh, I got to get out of here. Uh, <laughs> I th- uh, what, what's the show he's on? 
Uh, America's Got Talent. He does. Th- he's I'm, the judge my goal on that. is to see him next year. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I, the producer you would reached out to me. Crush that show. If I did that same story, yeah, well, I'd pull those heartstrings. I'm, I'm gonna fucking use that story. I don't give a shit. I, I've been dead before because that motherfucker. I'm gonna get every dollar I can out of that story. Absolutely. Well, you also, do it too like, much if they actually pay that bill, though. I'm not paying that bill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got that wiped away. Nah. I, Is it wiped away officially or no? Yep. Oh, yeah. it took me six months. And it was the biggest pain in the ass thing. The fun thing, um, I kind of one of those people where it's like when you're being stubborn, I'm gonna out stubborn you. Oh, really? Well, because they would they would what they would do is you uh <laughs> they would tell you to apply for, you apply for charity care, but in the, in the course of doing that for the hospital, you had to apply for Medicaid, Medicare. Social Security, disability. You had to apply for like 20 fucking things and get denied by all of them, which means you had to go through all the processes of all this for no reason, yeah. just for the sake of getting the denial. And then they'd send you a 20, 30 page packet. You'd what? fill it out. You'd do a phone, a two hour phone interview, and they'd mail the motherfucker back to you with three pages circle saying, ineligible handwriting. Please redo. Brand oh new packet. Oh my God. That happened four fucking times. So all old people just get. Boo, like bang it's a it's a it's a sifting process of who hangs on right and i didn't want to pay 147 thousand well, dollars imagine if english is and your second language like how the, hard it would be to write that's exactly it's there there are ways to fuck you they want to frustrate you yeah and i go listen i beat death what you bringing right like really you know what i mean yeah. like <laughs> Next time the devil shows up, he better bring a friend. Because right. I mean, I'm. <laughs> but they're like, some people would rather die than fill out this paperwork. So no, because like it became up. when they would come in the mail again, I would almost get excited because I had nothing to do. I was at my home. I was I was off the road for six months. Yeah, I like sat a, in my apartment recovering from my chest. I did my chest reheal. The so quill, I, like mm, look like more packets. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Writing in I cursive. Love all those bit, uh, but the civil, not the civil war. Uh, that is for about the Civil War. Yeah, then, but, but how the letters changed. This yeah, woman yeah. finds me on the battleship of tearing and oppression. Don't oh, fuck nobody. Well, so but you got it wiped. Like you, you were, you made it. You're all the few. seven hundred dollars uh, that you I had to pay seven hundred dollars to uh, to the fucking eight, to the EMT who the the what about the EMT the the ambulance company would not. I was like, bro, I got a hundred and forty six thousand three hundred dollars wiped away. And you're gonna try to hustle me for seven hundred dollars. I settled that thing for about three fifty. I got it about half. And he was like, I'll do half. And I'm like, this closes the book. Yeah, let's You're do the it. best haggler I've ever heard of. Oh life. yeah, I'm the worst. I won't ever like I just I just pay it. I just go fuck it. I guess I'm gonna I I'm so bad about it. JC's even one better good, than I am. Really? He is probably one of the most he'll find, you know, really the angles better Anything. than me sometimes. Yeah. Mitch Burroughs also like that. Like he actually got me to not have to pay things. He's like, you, you're not paying that. And I was like, nah, I don't care. He's like, no, I'll call him. And he would call and pretend to be me. And then they wouldn't want to deal with it. And they're like, all right, fine, sir. And if you create a headache for someone and they're in the wrong, yeah. you can really bend them over a barrel. Oh, it was amazing. Like uh, JC's rental car that he has, uh, they rented to him with expired tags. Mm. So he's like, I've been pulled over, blah, blah, oh, blah, yeah, yeah. you motherfuckers. Well, what would you recommend I say to this hotel that has a black wiggler left in the closet? And I found a, a, What's bomb, a black wiggler, a dick sleeve, whatever we're talking about, that thing. I would call them and ask them if it's customary if those things are left behind for the guests. I left a whole video. <laughs> oh, what I would first do I don't is, know what to ask for. I, I, I would call the black wiggler? You, I would no, first I off, I would call... The corporate number you can find. Yeah. Um, given your status. Yeah. Um, I think, and the fact that if you were to release that video, yeah. it would be a ton of negative press. Sure. So, I mean, I would just say, listen, you need to make this right or I'm going to make this public. But how, when I kind of said that in an email and they're like, we were happy to help, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't even know what to ask for because the hotel room was paid for by the comedy club. So it's not like they could be like, oh, 25 Wigglers, dude. Ask for uh, yeah. some sort of voucher for a gift, uh, a voucher for free hotel stays. Free yeah, there you go. Wigglers. So, yeah. <laughs> just say, you know, just say, listen, I, I'm having a, I'm, I, you know, let me get X. Because I thought like, oh, maybe I'll be like, oh, I, my nieces were staying with me and they saw it. But like, I didn't like, I didn't know. No, I mean, to, the like, thing is when you have them by the balls, don't grab them by the neck. Right. You know what I mean? Because it it's, it's overkill. It's so nice though. 
Just made that up. Freaking. I just made that up. What was the one from I can't earlier? come unless you do both, though. Gotta get your nut. <laughs> yeah. Get as nuts as you can. No, but I mean, like, at a certain point, you want to just... by the balls. You don't want to hit too. them too hard because they're going to go, okay, sir, now you're Already, just, you just know. don't, like, lie to them. Like, I don't need to lie. I really did find... Yeah, I found ch- a yeah. dildo on a dick sleeve. Why exactly? In your fucking place. Well, you should, first off... Uh, your housekeeper should have done a more thorough job. That's also extremely unsanitary. Yeah. Um, and so it's a health risk. What if it was so awful? A disgusting inconvenience. Yeah, and it tastes gross. How awful. <laughs> <laughs> also, how awful it would be like, hey, you know, we read everything. We saw the video. We're really, really sorry. Don't worry. We fired that housekeeper. So we, I hope that you're, <laughs> you're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. We put the wiggler all the way yeah. in her. We set her yeah. on her way. Lupita <laughs> no longer works here. And you're like, that's not what I wanted. Yeah. No, you, could, you also could issue a statement when you're contacting them. So I don't want the housekeeper fired oh, over yeah. a simple mistake. You know, even though the technical of the problem was hers. Right. You know, yeah, you might, she might get fired, but hey, you'll get some free stays. <laughs> but I'm not even going to. I just wonder how long What's that thing was there. Oh, I think it was in there. It could. Well, I guess my biggest problem with it is that uh, was there a Wiggler web? What? No, it was just the idea. Like when you go to a hotel room, I'm the kind of guy who just like I set up my stuff, like by like like my take me put my clothes out. I go to sleep. I'm very rarely in the room. I definitely don't hang out or do anything in the room. I masturbate or something, or like have a girl Bro. over. But that's the most. Nothing crazy. So when I go to a hotel, I presume that's kind of what everyone else does in their hotel rooms. But when you find something like that, like it makes you look around, going, "What happened in these walls?" Oh, <laughs> like, you know what's fun? You start thinking about like, do people go to hotels just to like have these weird things? And you so, ever seen a porno? Where's the living room shot in a hotel room? <laughs> Bro, I know what the inside of a, a La Quinta looks like. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. That was the biggest part. Is it opened up my eyes to like so much hypotheticals. I had a buddy of mine, uh, there was a Comedy Zone room in Fort Mill, South Carolina, and they used the same micro hotel, and I was there like three weeks before he was, and I was like, hey man, they put you in the handicap room next to the vending machines on the second floor? Yeah. And Tix back was just, fuck did you do? What the fuck <laughs> did you do? I was like, just wear flip-flops all week, dog. <laughs> I would not let bare skin touch that floor. I didn't That's do anything amazing. in that room. I just knew. No, it's good to put that fear in them. Yeah. yeah. And they put the fear it's in it. religion basically got their whole system yeah, started. It's got some yeah. power in it. Yeah. No, that black wing. That jizz fear. I think it was. So I think it was in black there for a wiggler. while. That's why I think. I keep thinking of fishing when you keep saying black <laughs> wiggler. I think it's some dude in a camo hat and a Tennessee camo hat. Like, hey, got folks, em. welcome back to Tarpon Springs. <laughs> I'm Mike. We're going to talk about getting fishing today. Give me that black wiggler. <laughs> Jeff, we get no response from the hotel, but the black wig- wiggler company is yeah. like, oh, we're sponsoring you. Yeah. Jeff, yeah, you're yeah, thanks for saying it so much on the pod. Die in the yeah. wool wiggler. <laughs> well, I think it was there for a while because where I found it was hard. It's hard to explain to people. You know where you hang up your clothes in that little dumb cabinet? Yeah. There's a shelf it's on top. It's called a closet. Well, it's like, it's not. I like that she's in a hotel room hiding the, room hide in the oh, wiggler. Okay. It's kind of like it's a, a wardrobe. It's like yeah, it's like a oh, wardrobe. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. But there's the top of where you hang everything Some up is like go, is where wiggler. my eyes is. <laughs> and then there's this shelf, and then another shelf that's real high up. That why would you use that? And then the, that's the top of the thing. So I saw something up there. And was like, what is that? And I'm 6'4", and I have long, gangly arms. And I still had to like... Uh, but I touched it with my uh, hands. Like, like Michael Crowley I'm looking for the beast and the shitter. Oh, uh, it was so <laughs> gross. Pulls out a wiggler. Uh, He's going to kill Salazzo with a wiggler. It was the worst. I literally thought... So I grabbed it. I thought it was like a vacuum extension or something. Like something on things you put. And I was like, look at it. And I go, oh. And so then it was like. Wiggler. Right. <laughs> yeah. Damn black wiggler got me. And so I I immediately went and grabbed my phone. And, Slipped out uh, your hand a few times, didn't it? Oh, Fucking wiggler so juice. So gross. And I filmed it. I, t- I grabbed it with like a hanger. And I like sang a little oh. song about about it. That's, what that, that's the same video I sent to corporate. But I muted, muted it. it, yeah, so they wouldn't hear that I'm like singing a song hard about act, hard, act, hard, hard to faux f- yeah. fake at being upset. I when was you're singing. outraged. <laughs> you seem like you're singing a song and smiling. Dancing. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Go back. No, no, that's how I deal with pain. Yeah. It was weird. That dude was getting gross in there. <laughs> how big was it? Oh, uh, it was like you know, so. a regular sized wiener made for so. a small man's wiener. 
Is, is that can, can I borrow it? <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone kept joking with me, like, uh, because I put it on my story on Instagram, and everyone was like, Oh man, what'd you end up doing with it? What did you, I was like, what, what do you think? I left it. What do you think I yeah, did with it's it? It's my new friend. <laughs> like, it's in your backpack. I, it could the still be in that room because I pushed it to the back of that shelf, <laughs> like, so that the management well, came you also in. Think, you can't blame a, 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 a a cleaning lady who's probably five five. Exactly. She would. She couldn't see it if she got on. You know. Oh, she's tall. Listen, I'm a short man. I'm <laughs> sorry. This is- it could be AJ and Wilson from Las Vegas Aces. At a boy. I forgot. Yeah, we should talk about that. You were at Vegas at the same time as yeah, us. Yeah, I was uh, uh, by coincidence. And we walked to the. Uh, me and Jeff walked to uh, the Brad Garrett's Comedy Club to see you and Cindy. You guys missed me. Just missed you. Just missed me. I was. I had to write home at an audition today, but uh. The, uh, that game was good. Like the second half got real chippy. I enjoyed watching it. Yeah. And it ended up being a good game. And the, and the team we wanted to win won. The Dream? We were friends with three of the Dream. Oh, yeah. The, the one of the ladies on the Dream, the, the one that scored 15, their f- small forward. Um, uh, Brightland, Bettler, Jessica. Blake. No, uh, I think her last name was like Beeland or something like that. Oh, I don't Byland. know. Uh, man, she killed it. Yeah, they were super good. Well, the best player was like injured. And that's how we met her. She was like in the pool and she was like a very tall uh, lady. We were like, they're wearing WNBA like sports bras, like in the pool. They're very large ladies, like very tall. And uh, we're like, you guys play WNBA? <laughs> and they're like, huh? I was like, you guys play in the WNBA? They're like, yeah, how did you, are you guys going to the game? Or like, what do you mean? How did we know? Like you're, you're pro- wearing it and you're, you're in the pool. It. Also, I didn't. You're super tall. You're like as tall or the taller than me. Yeah. Actually, one of them was, and uh, and then that's yeah. They were like, yeah, if you want to meet our they wives. Balled up, man. They fucking balled. <laughs> the refs were terrible in that game, though. You know, I didn't like the coach. The 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 aces coach or the dream coach? The dream coach. You didn't like her? She was just yelling at the players the whole time. That's I feel what coaches like one of the refs uh, just. I didn't like it. Some of those refs were terrible. I just. was couple of plays, I'm like, there wasn't even a fucking foul there. What are you doing? Like, Well, the refs were also boys, which I thought was fascinating. Not all of them. There was one boy. There was, boys. There was one girl. He seemed like he was yelling at ladies. It just felt <laughs> weird. There's a lady coach, lady players, put some lady well, refs. It, it's weird when you're watching like WNBA because when you want to yell out man up, it's just yeah. like, you know, who's your man? Yeah. Like, it's like, you know, like, you know, like, you sound like you just learned the basketball terms. Yeah. Like, watch the other guard. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Yeah, you can't. You're trying to like take gender out of it, but it's difficult. Yeah. Well, the, I didn't like that the coach would. So, like, if the players would do something bad, she'd be over there and like just grilling them in their face. So you think that's, I guess, pretty normal or or standard. You don't but then, that but often. then when they would do bad or when they would do good, she's still yelling at them and throwing stuff. You're like, wait, you're just mad the entire time. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's like Doc Rivers, man. And then all the play- yeah, I guess. But then all the the girls are like just ignoring her and like not listening. It was like, just felt weird. <laughs> I got a friend that's in the WNBA. She set the uh, season assists record this You're year. You're kidding. What's her name? Courtney Vandersloot. She went to high school. Oh, right? nice. Does yeah, she I, play for the Storm? She, no, she plays for the Chicago Sky. Okay. Uh, a lot of the girls and the coach just came from the Chicago Sky and went to the Aces. Mm. Uh, a lot of WNBA talk, but what made you go to the game? We went to the game because we met some of the girls so that play. and the headliner, us. his sister was there with her friend. Who was the girlfriend of the small forward? Okay, yeah. And then she invited us to go to the game, and I'm like, I would love to go to a WNBA game, you know? Two of the taller. Okay, so like, I'll tell you the story. Well, but you see I was, too. You know what they're like? You're, you're a professional athlete, right? Genetically, that's what you look like. You are, you know, like well, your body. There was three girls in the pool. We get in the pool, me and Randy. We have some drinks in our hands, and we start talking to these WNBA girls. Two of them look like WNBA players, and Stereotypically, you could presume that they are lesbians. The third one is littler and does not, you know, look like a stereotypical lesbian woman. But she, you know, there's no look for that. But the stereotypes are there. So the two basketball players leave after a little while, and we're talking to the trainer and or the little ones of the trainer, and we say, "So, like, hey, just be honest with us. Like, what percentage of the league are gay women? Like, you know, what percentage? If you had to guess, she's like ninety. 90%, I'm going to guess. And so we're like, you're kidding. She's like, yeah, very few of, of these girls are into dudes. And we're like, wow, that's really high. Like, that's a really high percentage. Then we get to the game, and the trainer girl that was littler, who we were having that conversation with, she's gay. 
We were having that conversation with with an also gay woman. Her girlfriend was like at the game. Like it was like such a funny thing. What is it about being in the league that makes you like chicks? I don't know. It's it doesn't weird, make any sense. There shouldn't yeah. be any correlation between. Well, yeah, because like ninety percent of the NBA isn't isn't homosexual, right? So it's just I don't know. It's a search for alpha. Basketball attracts poon, dude. <laughs> but that's my point, yeah. bro. If you can ball, is that science? <laughs> yeah. If you but can it's, ball, it's you a, can a get fascinating the thing. <laughs> it's, like, it's, a, it's a very interesting thing because yeah, you just well, it, there is no rhyme or reason. And to it, it. and you could compare it to like I'm, I'm, I'd be interested to see what the numbers are for softball players and soccer players. So I'm sure it's pretty high too. Well, it's, so? it's interesting because like uh, Maybe specifically not that high, the small but... forward that I was there, like her girlfriend was, you know, traditionally feminine. Right. I guess is the way to say that. Yeah. And like her girlfriend dressed very much in a more of a masculine professional athlete. Like, you know, if her girlfriend was a man and playing the NBA, you couldn't like, if you, if you just separated the female head with the male head on that body with what she was wearing, you really couldn't tell. <laughs> Which that. in the future we'll be able to do. I don't know, man. I hope. God bless America. Just kidding. Well, Disney's hoping. Yeah, right. <laughs> but no, it was just like it was just it was just very interesting the the dichotomy of the entire. Because I've never spent even two minutes thinking or discussing like what makes people gay. I just go, eh, people are people. It doesn't bother You're born me. That like, way. Yeah. Just, I, no but one, I, I didn't choose to be straight. No one. I, I just, like, right. anyways, this is a choice. Is an idiot. But I have a great interest in finding out what makes a, an athlete. I think all comedians are deep down sociologists. We right. want to know. We want to know the answers. Right. It's all the things we're constantly observing. Sure. Right. We're always paying attention and we notice outlying things of like, huh, why is it 90%? Right. Most people don't really give a shit or look into it past second, but comedians go, well, that doesn't add up in my head. Right. So let me think about Plus, it. Plus, I have great fun with a subject that's, you could argue, frivolous. It's, I, I will talk about something. Right. So I did this uh, with. Started with a girl I'm talking to, and then it, and then I had the same conversation with just some buddies and stuff. Uh, and everyone is mortified that I keep bringing it up, but I've talked about it for collectively a hundred hours at this point. Oh no, the baby! Yes, God, it's so great. Please. So, Chris, guess, try to guess, give your best guess of what how the youngest, how old the youngest woman to ever give birth to a healthy baby is, or just a baby. Uh, I'm going to say 10 or 11 years old. 10 or 11. Okay. And how old do you think the youngest boy was to ever make a baby? Nine. Okay. The youngest woman to ever give birth uh, to a baby and My raise it into adulthood, uh, she was five years old. She got pregnant when she was four. How? How does she have reproductive exactly. organs? Exactly. And a healthy baby. And the woman who had that baby is 88 years old. We're now still alive to tell the tale. That her son did die at like 48 or something like that, but she's like in her 80s. Uh, she's a Peruvian woman. She's success, it's well documented. She didn't even know she was the mom of the baby, a C section, obviously. She didn't even know she was the mom of the baby until she was 10 years old. They had to like tell her, like, you know, that's your baby. Like, you gave birth so to So, wait, so she was, I'm guessing, molested? Nobody knows the answer to that. And it's never been confirmed. Her dad was arrested on investigation of that. They found nothing to prove that he did anything of the sort, so he was he never tried or anything. And the girl was obviously too young to ask, you know, there isn't like, you know, who's the dad? She's like, I want ice cream. <laughs> like, you know, like, who knows? But so she even she might not know who the father is of, of that baby. Can't How do, crazy. Can you do like tests? Not then. You couldn't then. Oh. Did that and, maybe uh, join the NBA? Because she's 88 years old now. Oh, she was okay. five when she had it. And I don't know. But here's the thing about this. Yeah, the baby's definitely not in the NBA. Okay, it sounded like an NBA baby. No, he's a, he was a boy. Yeah. Oh, you thought it'd be a guy. I get no dad. I get the joke, Aaron. I didn't get it the at NBA. first. <laughs> we what were are you so much to say, Aaron? <laughs> yeah, no, just no, say a louder. If you verbalize it, maybe you'll really yeah, so get they can in figure trouble. Out where they're on the the they can figure out where you live. <laughs> you come to your house. You see how these videos shake out, right? Yeah, yeah. I never, know shop. never works good. Yeah. And so the youngest boy to the youngest uh, male uh, in the history of of childbirth was eleven. How's that happening? Like you, th- like it's great. Like the girls beat them by like six years. Well, they say women do mature tale. faster than men. That is but true. She's, but, but that's an anomaly. Like her body shouldn't have been able right. to just stay life. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Like I would even say, I mean, that she's. I don't know. That they could... brought her in because they thought her tummy had a tumor, as the story goes. And they were like, "No, this this little girl is." I pregnant. just don't understand. If she can't even menstruate. How could she? Evidently, she could. Maybe. 
I mean, who? Crazy. That's a weird genetic. I know. You should it's see the upsetting. images. It's really frightening. Yeah. Like her tummy is so large. She had a healthy baby. She had like a six pound baby. I don't like this story. It's at super crazy. But I'm so fascinated with the whole sleeping, situation. <laughs> The whole talking situ- about yeah, the whole situation is like so. Well, it's perplexing. I'm gonna Google this shit when I get home. It's very you ever, weird. You ever watch those YouTube videos late at night, like the ten creepiest yes. things? And you do it like at midnight, and you're like, "Well, I'm not sleeping." Yeah, cocaine what? is not as strong at keeping me up as these videos. It's like, demon YouTube videos, like real dude, demon videos. No, it's not even like demon shit. It's like creepy, just creepy humans. Oh, really? This one dude I saw a thing was a. Uh, he kept getting these alerts on his uh, door, like he had an app on his phone. Oh no! And it was a doorbell thing, <laughs> and like the doorbell would keep free. like He's it, the, get the, rid the of motion his. sensor would would alert him that someone was at his door, and eventually, like he'd wake up with like twenty of them at different times of the night. So he say, so he just records it one night, and somebody walks up, and the recording only picks up some. He looks like a kid, almost like a teenager. Um. Oh my god. Aaron's showing him the picture of the five-year-old baby. I couldn't have waited. I'm invested in yeah, this story. Yeah, I wanted to hear about that, but it's all right. I'm now, sorry. Chris, he said he's going to Google it later. But, but yes, yeah, so the only thing the audio picks up is the guy leaning in almost to the doorbell and going, "Yes, we are here." And then that was it. And then like oh. it happened for like two more nights, but then no one ever showed back up. Just the alerts, and then it stopped. Who wants to go to sleep? I have goosebumps. Oh my God. Wait, so did they, he said he recorded it, so there's video of that. Yeah, you, you, like it shows it on the video. Like, the, like what do you, you search to find the video? Ten, I mean, it was like 10 creepiest things caught on camera or some shit like that Good on YouTube. Good God. You know what? One, so I was watching just like fail videos. And then... What do you mean, like guy jumping off a building not making it? Well, no, you just like... You can even just search like fail army or fail whatever. Good. And it just compiles like people falling or even animals falling. Just funny stuff, but pretty yeah. harmless. Then it gets into like some like, you know, like, oh, God, was that guy okay? Like, that was a big one. And then like one of them was like a dude falling all the way down an escalator, which is pretty unforgiving. And I was like, oh, man, I'm going to try and find that one to watch it again because these are like 15 minute long, like little oh, quick no. things, like Chive TV almost. And so then we I, I looked the escalator ones. Then it goes to five people actually killed, caught on tape in an elevator. And I don't know why I stayed on it, but it it affected me for like a week and a half. I was so like, what, oh. they just plummet and they hit the ground and you see blood come out or something? No, it's always a door malfunction. People try to hold the door for other people. It takes their arm. Or, or like someone has like a dog that bolts out the thing and they're trying to save the dog and then it like drags them all the way up. Or, or like one girl like... Because you just see the floor going, and then they're like stuck on that floor, but the device is just kind of squishing it. It's almost like a guillotine. It's yeah, it's so gross. And like I watched that video, and I was just like, "What? Why did I do this? I knew it was going to be deaths. It says real deaths, and I still like just stayed down yeah, that." My gross. favorite is no, uh, the hawk throwing a goat off the side of a <laughs> cliff. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's just a goat oh. that got too close to the edge, and the hawk's like lunch, just brutal. and it flew down. Picked a fucker up and just goes six inches to the yeah. right and was like, you can't fly. Yep. And just drops yeah. the motherfucker. Do you know that Sad. what you just described is a famous, famous, famous thing? So not just once. It happens all the time. That's yeah. their hunting technique is they'll, they'll come swoop and then drop them and then, then follow the thing all the way down to the bottom and then just prey on it. I'm not sure what kind of bird it is. That's well, smart because I think, it's whole, I think if it's, it's not tenderized. dead by the fall... It's in, it's it's combat ineffective. Yeah. Yeah. When well, those goats, <laughs> those goats are uh, just climbing on the cliffside like idiots. It, they're they just look standing weird. there. Yeah, they look weird. Going, oh, I'm on this rock. Can't reach that out of the rock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very annoying. How would a goat beat a bird in a fight, though? Like, how would that even? With their horns. It would just be a lot of yeah, like, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Stay away from just, a cliff. Just yeah. Because against nothing. Yeah. yeah. It's not like you can pin it's it. Like if one person can fly and then one person can't, like, the dude that flies is going to win. So you think if I could just fly, I could just beat you in a fight then? Yes. Yeah, because you're out of reach. I'd swing at you. You would elevate. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. What do those two things have? Wings. Absolutely. Yeah. Just like Cassius Clay. Yeah. He had wings, dude. Drink Clay. Of, drink a lot Clay. of Red Bull. Clay. Well, thanks for being on the episode, man. You're so easy to talk to. Thank you, guys. I should plug your fun. show with JC. Uh, yeah, All Things Comedy. The show is called Impaired. 
uh, watch it while we are doing it. What's the premise? I've been invited to do it. I've, we smoke and dates drink. Dates have not worked out. <laughs> yeah, it's, you love the smoking. That's I like your the thing. JC's a drinker. JC we, loves we go back the and drinking. forth some episodes. We just trade off. It's just a lot of fun, man. We play games. We have you little have segments. Yeah. Yeah, and you guys, uh, do they get impaired with you? Yeah. Has anyone not been impaired with you? No, we won't have them on that way. It's, okay. They're boring. Yeah, they're boring. They're boring. Yeah. I don't want some fucking tea to learn all the shows. I'm not invited. I love it. No, I love it. That makes yeah, me so happy. Great. I know it's it's just it's tough lately with our scheduling because like both JC and I's careers are both in the airport. Which is direction. great. That's what you yeah, want. I mean, it's it's a problem you want to have, but it's also like it took forever to get this. Well, doesn't not, like the rest of your day toast. If huh? you get all fucked up, how do you do yeah. the rest of your day? Well, because so, a lot of times we shoot them in the evening, so it's oh, a little good. easier. Which sometimes and like we also get lifted to and from. So do the guests. So there's no danger in what we're doing, and it's fun. And what sucks is when we do back to back episodes in a day. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. We'll walk, I mean, like, because the second episode's sloppy as fuck. We're both of us are soused, and I'm stoned on top of it, and doing intros and outros are a pain in the ass. Just, uh, hey guys, welcome to another episode. What the fuck are we doing? I don't, it's amazing. Do you announce that you're fucked up from a previous episode when you do that? No, but like, well, yeah, if we do it, it's by accident. <laughs> yeah. Like we'll mention just in passing, like, this is our second episode. We're pretty, we're pretty <laughs> lit right now. Well, I do you find that those are better or worse? I think that's all worse. perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because some uh, of my worst drunk shows. Like, some people like watching train wrecks. Some people like watching a train go smooth. There you go. There's a, just for everybody. Um, I know which one I like and which one I like being on. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, I love reading the comments online because most oh, of them are positive. Oh, nice. Yeah, the best. Uh, the Some guy goes, if you change the show to another name, just call it Between Two Fat Guys. <laughs> I, was <being laughs> I was like, I was like, I gave the guy a like. Normally, I will not. Yeah, you like, liked the guy calling you fat. No, I just like a clever. I like a okay. like. I I never got mad at my high school third base coach for calling me Derek Eater. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like if you hit You're a home like, oh, run, wow, I'll yeah. tip my cap. <laughs> <laughs> if you you know. Yeah, that's another quotable <laughs> phrase that is very just true. I've just never been one to like if if it's a like when someone makes fun of my weight and it's not funny. Yeah, bro, I want to fix your fucking teeth with a <laughs> sledgehammer. Yeah, but when it's funny. I laugh just like anybody else. Yeah. A good joke is a good joke. I agree. You know? Thanks again for having me on, guys. Yeah, dude. Uh, Aaron, you got you got anything to plug? You plug? Uh, Flapper, September 12th. Sounds good. Jeff Z, you've, you've been here. What do you want to plug, dude? You got anything going on? Uh, the Grounded Podcast and uh, my Instagram, Jeff Zimisek. Got it. T, T Dog. Yeah. Gaming uh, Channel still going strong. Gaming Channel. Jeff and Tony play. Come check us out. Your podcast. Yeah. My screen gaming, peakers. Screen peakers. My gaming podcast. We got some good stuff coming. So check this, out. Ep- this episode's been peak, dog. There you go. Um, that means for good. the people. It looks like cool. you're making moonshine right here. He's got the fucking. I know. The, 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 I wish well, it's because I use this to drink out of. Can we hold I was, this real quick. What's that? Can we hold this real quick? Yeah. That goddamn Carter's going to ruin this fucking country. <laughs> 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 Two quotes that got I, uh, me. Uh, oh, the, the whole weekend I kept taking Drew Thomas's hat and kept doing characters with it. Just oh, think, nice. Oh, yeah. Give me a hat. I can do a character. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> give me any hat. A man who wears many hats. No, I just always like that idea of being inventive with an idea. Like, you, because, like, you look, I would say acting is a lot of the wardrobe. That's what helps you get into what the character is. Sure. Yeah, it helps sure. a lot. It makes a, big a difference. Hat. A hat's a very defining character. It makes it's a, a big head difference. and body mask. <laughs> And then you do the masking you of the like you're in some kind of, like, English is your second language at some <laughs> salon. It's a head body mask. That's a head body mask, you know? And girls wear makeup masks. All right. I'm going to be a stand-up live in Scotts, or uh, stand-up live in Huntsville, Alabama Ooh, this weekend. When does this air? Uh, this comes out this week. Okay. Wednesday. I'll be at Spokane Comedy Club in Spokane, Washington. Nice. I would love to be like, I'm at Spokane Comedy Club in Toledo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Spokane. It's right outside of Tampa. <laughs> No, the um, is that Adam Norris's club? Yeah, nice. Is that his last name? I just don't. Yeah, Adam Norris, great guy. I, yeah, I'm like, doing I'm that, and forever. then I got him with the skyline. I got in Comedy Nest. I'm doing that. Uh, 2019. Just the beginning, my friend. Hopefully so. I got the good thing is I got new management, and then I'm gonna meet him with, uh, like a team. At, nice. Yeah, hopefully so. It's it's gonna be great. Yeah, it's nice having people that'll fucking. I'm not gonna slow down my hustle. It's just nice having. People go to bat for you. Yeah, yeah, it's just a guy that can. I feel like at this point, I've done as much as I can by myself. So when also uh, this sounds weird, but when I hear from my team, they've gotten me things. 
or there's an opportunity for a thing. They're kind of like uh, taking a little bit of that uh, rejection as opposed to like me having to hear no's eight times a week. I probably got 20 no's this week and I didn't have to hear any of them. No, that's nice. They get to take it and they, it doesn't hurt them. Right. And they also, they don't even have to tell me because like, uh, Jeff's probably going to forget about it. He's doing this. He's doing this. He's doing this. And so. Yeah. Like my, uh, my new manager, his name is Brett. Uh, he did more for me in one day than my previous in oh, one, in one day than my previous manager did in eight months. Yeah, which was just like, and, and the funny, the most, the the most telling thing that I realized was when I fired my manager via email. Yeah, that was the fastest she had ever replied. Uh, yeah, to mm-hmm. my email, and I go, well, that's that answered that question. That Absolutely. thank you for answering that question. You know, I wish she hears this, and I hope she knows that because just more. <laughs> she hard. was, I mean, she was very supportive, but like she just didn't. Yeah, but you don't need a I cheerleader. Want- you need a goddamn coach. You need a manager. You yeah, need a general I'm, manager. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. All right, guys. Love you guys. This has been a fun time. Thanks, thanks for, for having me on, guys. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Friendship. How great was that? Another fun episode, another good time. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to all the Patreon subscribers. Uh, don't forget to rate, review, give us stars, thumbs up, say nice things. Uh, if you have a bad combat, any feedback, anything you think we should work on, uh, kill yourself. We don't want to hear it. Just don't be mean. If you don't have nothing nice to say, you know how it goes. It's that Bambi quote. Uh, we love you guys. Uh, thanks for listening and being cool to us. Send us gifts. Send us money. We deserve it.